Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be making a ring out of Amboina burl wood and cremated remains from my childhood dog. I'm going to put them both on a ceramic core and um, kind of take you through the process on how I make it. Uh, I've had a lot of people in the past ask me, you know, can I make a memorial ring? Can I use the ashes from a pet or a parent or somebody to make a ring? Well, I'd always turned it down because I've never worked with cremated remains before. And one thing that I always do when somebody asks me for a new design is I like to make one for myself first, kind of as a tester to see if it's going to hold up, you know, what it's going to look like, how the materials work and all that. So that's what this ring is all about. And um, it turned out really well. I was pleasantly surprised with how the, uh, the material worked and how it all came together. So I'll take you through the process. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. So I'm starting with a piece of Amboina burl that's cut to an inch and a half by an inch and a half, and it's about, about three-eighths of an inch thick. I'm just putting it into my 50 millimeter jaws here. Holds it real well. Just getting it set up to drill out the center using the Forstner bit. Usually I'll turn the lathe speed down, down to about 750 RPM. Here you can see I'm using a 20 millimeter portion of it to get the center started for me. This Amboina burl smells amazing when you're working with it. It's uh, kind of sweet, kind of spicy. If you've never worked with it before, get some. Because uh, not only does it smell really good, it's a really pretty wood. Alright, once I've got the, the hole started with the Forstner bit, I move over and start using my square carbide cutter to open up the hole a little bit more. And what I'm looking for is a fit for my core so that it will actually go around the core with just a little bit of room to spare. So I was shooting for 21 millimeters. I did edit this down a little bit so you didn't have to watch me sneaking up on it, but it did take a little while to sneak up on that measurement. The, um, the core, when I measure it, is at 20.8, 20.9, somewhere in there. And then um, I just leave a little extra room so the glue has a, a place to bond. Now once I've got that cored out to where I want it, then I go ahead and just mount my Amboina up on the ring mandrel just directly. And this is going to give me the ability to go ahead and uh, shape it to where it fits in the core. So first I'm going to go ahead and, and just bring it down to round using my spindle gouge. This takes a couple minutes to bring it down to round. Just take your time. Make sure your tools are sharp. And there it is, down to round. Now I'm just taking a measure of the inside of the core. That's about 5.1 millimeters, so I'm going to make it just a little bit narrower for the wood. Now that core is uh, ceramic, and I'd never used ceramic until now. And um, I've been trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. So I decided I was going to make this memorial ring with it. Now I'm just bringing down the width of the um, Amboina. I'm going to sneak up on it a little bit. I don't want to go too far. Obviously you can't add it back on. There's a couple tricks to, to hide it if you do go too narrow. Like moving your um, 
inlay over to the side. That works well. And it's not quite fitting there. You see exactly how much I need to take off here. Bring out the calipers again. All the carbide cutter to uh, that I'm using, they, um, they're the woodpecker ultra shear, and these are the pen size carbide tools. They work really well for rings. And right here you can see I got the, uh, the width just right. So now that I've got the, the wood shaped how I want it, I'm going to go ahead and break it. And what I'm doing is I'm looking to see if I can spot any obvious grain to uh, to make a cleaner break with the pearl it's really not so I just decided this was going to be it and I just use a little awl lay it down on my lathe and press the uh, the wood on both sides to snap it now it's important that you do break it this way you don't want to cut it with a saw this way there's no curve when you go to glue it back around the ring core those uh, those seams will all but disappear. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just making a mark so that I know which sides line up to each other because I have tried to glue them on backwards before. Just using the medium Mercury Flex CA to glue this on. Has a pretty good hold. And this is where I usually glue myself to my project. I'm just putting a, a good amount on the core and pushing in the first half of that Amboina burl. Now I'm going to put some more CA on there. Make sure that I get it on the wood so there's good a good bond with the wood. Another good amount on the core itself, just in the channel. Made sure to check that I've got the right sides going together and just press it in then I'm going to take a clamp and put a little bit of pressure on there I just want to make sure those seams are good and tight and I'm going to set it aside for a few minutes and just like that it's a few minutes later I'm going to take the clamp off and I'm going to mount the ring on the mandrel Just scraping off a little bit of the extra CA. Now with the ceramic cores, you want to make sure you're not putting too much pressure on them because they can and will snap. And again, I've got my spindle gouge. I'm just going to bring it down a little further towards the core. You'll see I get tired of it here in a minute and go back to my carbide. You'll notice the, the ring stops spinning every now and again. It's because I didn't have enough pressure in there. This, again, is the first time I've used ceramics, so I was kind of erring on the side of caution. I was taking it really slow with that spindle gouge. I've had too many pieces of Amboina just shatter on me, getting too aggressive. I was also kind of just enjoying the smell and, and taking my time working it down. Now here I'm putting a little bit more pressure from the tailstock in because it was spinning a little bit too much on me. 
and I am using my tailstock instead of the set screw that comes with the mandrel. Um, I've kind of beat my mandrels up over the last year or so, and they're not as true as they used to be. But the um, the live center there helps true it back up a little bit, so I've got less run out. Works a lot better now for me. I just need to buy new mandrels. Back to my uh, my square carbide. All I'm doing is bring it down level with the um, with the core at that point. And that way I can start to work my inlay channel. And I did have my mask on the whole time every, while I was turning. But I tend to take it off when I'm doing different things. Again, this is one of the Woodpecker Ultra Shear tools. This is the detail tool. It is ridiculously sharp. And I love it for cutting these small inlay channels. Now you'll see I, I angle the tool because I want a, a square side going down. I don't want it angled. And a lot of times if I'm cutting the channel and kind of towards the center of the blank, I'll, uh, I'll undercut it just a little bit. That way the CA can kind of go under the lip and hold that inlay in just a little bit stronger. Just working that channel down, trying to flatten out the bottom a little bit. Every once in a while I'll stop the lathe and you know, get a different angle on it so I can see you know, just how how that inlay channel is looking. I've got a, a TV on the other side of the lathe so it's a, a nice dark surface to look against to have some contrast there. I need her to square it up just a little bit more. In there you can kind of see that it's a, a nice square channel. Now here's uh, here's the part that I've never done before. I've never worked with cremated remains and um, I was pleasantly surprised at how easy it was to work with. It kind of reminded me of uh, the consistency of uh, concrete. There's some real fine particles, but there's also some you know, slightly larger chunks in there. Try not to think about that too much, about what, uh, what parts and pieces would be there. But I'm using the Mercury Flex Medium CA again. Just putting some down in the channel and then sprinkling on some of the, some of the ashes. And once I've got a, a good little pile going there, I'll take my little tool that I used, pack it down in there, and make sure I get it packed down nice into that, that inlay channel. I don't want it to go anywhere. And I want it nice and full. No gaps and all that. And you'll see I'll tap on that mandrel every once in a while just to get anything left over you know to fall down and I do have a tray underneath of it so that I can catch any of the ashes that uh, that might fall past I do the same thing with with anything that I'm inlaying um, opals or you know sand any of it I like to keep as much as I can I don't like to waste Again, just packing it in there, making sure it's good, solid inlay. This is the last little bit that I need to fill.
No, that tool came in a set of like five or six. They each have a different shape on, on both ends actually. So there's like 10 or 12 different shaped ends that, uh, that came with that kit. And it's just, it's from Harbor Freight. I paid like five bucks for it, something like that. Now here I'm just going around looking for spots that I think need a little bit more. Now once they're all filled up, I went around with just thin CA. Again, it's the Mercury Flex. This is the thin. So I want to make sure that everything's got a good hold in there. And I did go kind of bulky on this. Again, this is the first time I've worked with this material, so I figured uh, the more the merrier. Now once that thin CA is set up, then I move over to my round carbide tool. It's a little less aggressive than the square and definitely a lot less aggressive than that detail tool. This helps knock down the edges and uh, starts to shape up that inline. Now once I get close, then I'll move back over to my square carbide. And I'll go right to the edge of the core. And I always make sure that all my materials are slightly below the edge of the core so that when I go to finish, I can bring my, uh, my Illuma UV finish right up to the top of the, the core and there's a good layer covering the whole ring. Now I'm not showing the uh, Illuma UV process, the, you know, my final finishing process in this video. I do have other videos here on YouTube that you can watch to see how I do that. Now one thing I noticed about the ceramic core, nothing scratches it. I went right up to it with my carbide tools. Uh, I took a razor blade to it to clean up the rest of the CA that kind of spilled out onto the edges and it looks like it came right out of the, the bag and no scratches whatsoever. Didn't have to sand, didn't have to refinish it. Really, really neat material. That's it. It's all shaped up. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit here with some uh, denatured alcohol. Just wipe off some of the dusts and uh, see what the grain looks like. Really happy with the way this one turned out. Alright, so that's it. That's how I made my ring out of a ceramic core, Amboina burl wood, and the cremated remains of my childhood dog. Um, I didn't show the finishing process with the Illumi UV that I usually use. I've got another video that uh, that goes into that quite a bit. Uh, if you'd like to see another one, let me know. Um, I just want to mention too, I did mention some specific tool names and brands during the video. It's not sponsored. Um, it's just what I use. I do have some affiliate links um, through Amazon that... Uh, that I have linked for some of the specifics that I do use. Uh, so if you'd like to visit my webpage and check that out, feel free. I'll have the links down below. Um, feel free to contact me, ask any questions. I do run a Facebook group called Wood Ring Makers. If you want to learn more, join a community of a bunch of great people that make rings, get some ideas, learn a little bit, come on over, join. I'll go ahead and link that as well. Uh, the ceramic core that I used, I got from fatcat.net. Um, again, not sponsored, but he's got some great products. And uh, he's real active in the, the ring making community. So it's a, a brand I know I can trust. And um, I'll have his link down there too. Uh, any other questions, comments, let me know. Love to hear from you. I love to help teach people and learn how to get all this stuff uh, made. Thanks again.